The year is 1492, and the horizon trembles. From the jagged cliffs of the Basque country, where the Pyrenees crash into the roiling Bay of Biscay, a fierce breed emerges. These are no mere mortals. They are Basque seafarers, conquistadors, and priests, their veins pulsing with the ancient fire of haplogroup R1b and the enigmatic shadow of RH negative blood. These are the descendants of Europe's oldest bones, their DNA a fortress against the tides of history. What drives them to cross the Atlantic and clash with Aztecs, Maya, and Tarahumara? Greed, glory, and a genetic legacy that refuses to fade. They storm New Spain, Mexico's sprawling northern wilds, ready to carve empires from jungles and deserts. But this isn't just a tale of triumph. It's a saga of DNA drenched in sweat, silver, and native vengeance. These guys were no saints, but their DNA stuck around, a legacy of conquest with a side of swagger. The Basques played a big role in the Americas after 1492. As skilled sailors and fishermen from Spain's northern coast, they were among the earliest Europeans to cross the Atlantic. But this wasn't a gentle tale, its conquests roar and genes battling through centuries. By the 16th century, Basque whalers and cod fishermen worked the Grand Banks off Newfoundland, possibly even pre-Columbus, with archaeological hints like Basque-style boat remains found there. They perfected the Caravelle, a nimble ship key to Spain's age of exploration, and their oak forests supplied timber for fleets. In Mexico, Basques arrived with the Spanish conquest, figures like Juan de Zumarraga, the first bishop of Mexico, and Francisco de Ibarra, who explored northern New Spain, were Basque. They settled heavily in colonial Mexico, especially in mining regions like Zacatecas and Guanajuato, leaving a cultural imprint still seen in surnames and geographic place names. Their numbers grew over time. By the 19th century, Basque immigrants flocked to the Americas, including Mexico and the U.S. Southwest, often as shepherds or merchants. In Mexico, they integrated into the mestizo population, mixing with native and Spanish descendants. Imagine the scene. It's the 16th century, and a bunch of rugged Basques from Spain's northern coast are piling onto ships, ready to storm New Spain and beyond. These aren't your average conquistadors twirling moustaches. They're sailors, miners, and priests with a genetic calling card that's still echoing today. For example, haplogroup R1b, the Y-chromosome titan forged in the crucible of prehistory. Marked by the M343 mutation, it sweeps Western Europe like a conquering horde. Seventy to eighty percent of Spain, France, Britain bow to its reign, but in the rugged Basque heartland, it's a relentless overlord. 85 to 90 percent of their men wield haplogroup R1, BDF 27, a subclade as fierce as the Pyrenees themselves. Its origins, a shadowed past, mysterious hunter-gatherers 25,000 years ago, then the Yamnaya, steppe warriors thundering in 5,000 years ago, their R1B subclade a spear through Europe's heart. The Basques clutch this genetic legacy tight, their isolation a shield against the chaos of Neolithic farmers and Indo-European invaders. While others fall, they stand, R1B DF27, their banner, unbowed and unbroken. The Basques hail from the Pyrenees, straddling Spain and France, a place where mountains meet the sea and people speak Euskara, a language so ancient it's unrelated to anything else in Europe. Now let's talk RH negative, the blood type that's got conspiracy theorists buzzing. Most folks are RH positive, sporting the D antigen on their red blood cells. 85% of Europeans, 95% of Africans, and almost 100% of Native Americans. But the Basques, they're flipping the script with 25-35% to RH negative, way higher than the European 15% average. RH negative is a deletion in the RHD gene, pure genetic chance amplified by isolation, like an ancient dice roll in the Pyrenees. Some say it's evolution at work, but more likely just genetic drift in a small population. Then, in the 16th century, they hurl this genetic mix across the sea to New Spain. But how did these Biscay boys leave their genetic mark on a foreign land of avocados and pyramids? Picture them, wiry, bearded, probably chuckling at storms that had sink lesser sailors. They didn't just bring swords and crosses, they packed a genetic punch that's still bouncing around Mexico's gene pool today. New Spain unfurls, a land of towering pyramids, endless jungles and natives wielding haplogroup QM3, their Siberian legacy etched 15,000 years deep. 
Aztec sacrifice hearts, the Tarahumara run canyons, Lacandon Maya vanish into shadows, all RH positive, and R1 be free. Then the Basques descend, ships slicing waves, swords gleaming, jeans poised to strike. This is no gentle meeting, it's a collision of worlds, and blood will spill. Native blood was 99 to 100% RH positive, no European markers in sight. Then Columbus happens, and bang! Basque sailors, conquistadors, settlers, storm in like genetic parasites. How do they mix with natives who've been growing corn and dodging jaguars for millennia? Basque sailors were the vanguard, including Francisco de Ulloa, sailing the Gulf of California in 1539, eyeballing Sinaloa's coast, and Andres de Urdaneta plotting the Manila-Acapulco galleon run in 1565. But these guys weren't just planting flags, they were planting their genetic legacy. The Basque mariners in their caravels cut through storms like wolves through sheep. Their ships hit Veracruz, Acapulco, Mazatlan, coastal hotspots where haplogroup R1b first mingled with native mitochondrial DNA. In 1539, Francisco de Ulloa sailed the Gulf of California, mapping Sinaloa's shores. This Basque seafarer's Gulf of California voyage brought early European boots to Sinaloa's shores. Legend says he vanished, may be eaten by natives, may be lost at sea. Some say the Pericu tribe of Cabo feasted on his Basque flesh. By the 1600s, Basque-built ships hit Mazatlan en route from Acapulco to Manila. Storms wrecked a few. Imagine sailors joking as silk cargo sank, muttering in Euskara about their bad luck. Nonetheless, their R1B spiced up Sinaloa's gene pool, one shipwreck at a time. Imagine Basque sailors in the 16th century bobbing along Sinaloa's coast, tough guys from Biscay with their R1B genes. Andres de Udineta, another Basque titan, charts the Manila-Acapulco route in 1565. His galleons dock in Sinaloa and Acapulco, unloading silk and haplogroup R1B. Basque sailors mingle with native women. Their RH-negative blood still whispers through mestizo veins, a faint echo of Biscay's gales. The Basques built ships in Mexico's ports, Veracruz, Acapulco, Mazatlan, using local timber like mahogany. The Manila galleon trade, launched by Urdaneta, saw Basque-designed galleons haul silk and spices to Acapulco, then silver back to Asia. Basque families like the Echeverias ran shipping firms, embedding their genes and culture in coastal towns. The Cajita and Mayo people along Sinaloa's rivers might have smirked at these bearded Basques, strange men in bloated wooden boats, nothing like their canoes. But their QM3Y DNA haplogroup held strong, while the Basque R1B trickled in. Then the land warrior strike, Francisco de Ibarra, a Basque fury, erupts in 1563. He founds Durango, battles natives in Sinaloa's Sierra Madre. His men, R1B ablaze, crush resistance, some natives fight back, and tales whisper of Basque soldiers roasted over fires. However, their genes crept into the Sierra Madre foothills. Their Basque DNA didn't care about borders. It spread through northern Mexico like salsa on a tortilla. So how did this Basque DNA legacy play out? New Spain's natives started at 100% haplogroup QM3 and RH positive. The Basque roll in, mostly men, few Basque women cross the Atlantic, and hook up with native women. And boom, mestizo babies. The Y DNA goes R1B, the maternal mitochondrial DNA stays native, and autosomally, it's a 50. 50 split at first. Fast forward a few generations, and Mexico's mestizo mix is 60% native, 35% European, and 5% other. Mining towns and frontier posts drew Basque settlers like moths to silver. Places like Durango, Zacatecas, and Sinaloa, Basque strongholds, see haplogroup R1b at 20 to 35 percent. What about that 25 to 35 percent RH negative blood trait? It's a whisper now. Four to five percent in Mexico's mestizos. Native RH positive genes swamped it, but it's still there. Ever checked your own DNA and spotted R1B? Could be a Basque conquistador waving hello from 500 years ago. Today, Mexico is a mestizo nation, 70% mixed per the last census. The Basque R1B peaks in the north. Durango is 30%, Sinaloa is 20-25%, to where miners and sailors settled. Surnames like Ibarra, Echeverria, and Zubizarreta dot the map, and towns like Mazatlan still fish with Basque-style flair. 
The Basque genetic legacy in New Spain isn't just dry DNA stats. It's a wild tale of ships, silver and smooching. R1B sailed over, hitched a ride with conquistadors, and settled into Mexico's north like a stubborn house guest. So what's your take? What would these Basques think if they saw their genes on a 23andMe report?